Hello, welcome back to the restaurant show here on CW57. Right now I'm very excited to talk to one of my favorite TV personalities. Being able to host a food show, I look up to this guy because he gets to do the, like, some of the funnest stuff in the world and try stuff I could never imagine. Andrew Zimmern, he's here to talk about his brand new uh, digital series called Big Country. Andrew, welcome to the restaurant show today. How are you doing? Thanks, Ryan. Glad to be here. We're very excited to have you. So tell us a little bit about this new project you're working on, this Big Country series. Well, it, I mean, it kind of goes back to the beginning of, you know, my idea for Bizarre Foods. You know, I wanted to travel around the world and tell stories about culture through food. And once I became a, a uh, nine month a year traveler, um, I began to realize that I was having cumulative change in my life because of the transformative power of travel. When you travel, you're a better version of yourself. You're, you're more patient, you're kinder, you're more understanding, you take different risks. Uh, you know, all your best uh, aspects of your personality come out. Um, and then you are able to bring those back into your life when you return home. Um, travel has incredible benefits that way. Um, plus it provides a needed respite from whatever's going on in our lives. So for years, I've been approached with the web series of all different types and uh, I've only said yes once before because the, if the content isn't right and the idea isn't right, I, I'm luckily in the position where I don't have to do it. Um, US Cellular came to me with the idea for Big Country. I said yes right away. And, and the reason was is that it, it was all about that transformative power of travel. The idea was let's hold a national call to action for friends and families to nominate their loved ones to go on a trip. These are people who are time poor, cash poor, circumstances of life prevent them from travel, or they've gotten in such a rut they just never travel at all. And we were able to take these people and put them on a plane and, you know, Shanghai them in, you know, the in the true sense of the word to another city to have a day long experience with me uh, from dawn to dusk. Um, and we got to see the change in them as human beings uh, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day in a much more profound way than we ever expected. It's super cool. And folks can see these episodes at uscellular.com slash big country. And maybe more importantly, um, we have one more trip yet to take in August and uh, we're still taking nominations for that trip until August 10th. So people can see the shows and nominate a loved one at the same time to come on a trip with me and have that transformative you know, thing happen uh, when you travel and, and do some good adventure learning. That is really cool. I'm, I'm going to have to check those out on uscellular.com for sure. That sounds like an absolute dream vacation to be able to kind of come hang out and eat some of the bizarre stuff you do and just be able to get away. Sounds like a lot of fun. Now, you mentioned being a nine month traveler and, and some of those things you put up with doing bizarre foods and all the other great stuff that you're up to. What about being homesick? Does being able to stay in touch with family, friends, things like that, make it a little bit easier to be away for so long at a time? You know, I, I'm not sure I could have done this job if it, if I wasn't in the digital age. Um, you know, I'm I'm a sensitive person, and I don't think anybody can be away from home for that long. You know, I'm married. I have a ten year old. Um, I, I miss them every day that I'm gone. Luckily. You know, we live in, in the digital age. And so I can make fun little videos and send them to my 10 year old. So regardless of what time zone I'm in, he can wake up and, and see me doing something pretty goofy. Uh, I can always Skype or FaceTime with my wife. I can keep in touch with fans on social media. I can talk to my friends any hour of the day or night. Um, I, I'm one of those folks that likes to be connected. I don't like to be disconnected. I'm, I'm thrilled to be attached to my community. I, I think that the world is about people and relationships. And that's why I go and travel and study people and relationships and I do it through food. Um, but people and relationships are primary to me. So consequently, I'm, I'm, I, I wanna stay in touch with that and stay connected to them. Now, being able to stay in touch with people and being in the digital age, people have vast opportunities to go and take trips, do things like that. What are some tips that you might have for someone that's always kind of thought of that dream vacation to get them to go out and finally take it and treat themselves to something like that? Well, number one, they shouldn't wait, they should do it. Number two, 
um, don't let the uh, don't let a good deal encourage you to take a vacation that's not 100% in your wheelhouse. Um, if you have a great deal at a beach resort in the Bahamas, don't do it if you don't like to sit on a beach with a stack of books all day long. If you like if you like the high speed energy of big cities, you know, get a get a trip and go to Asia or Europe or South America, you know, go to Santiago, Chile, uh, and hang out in one of the coolest cities in the, in the world that nobody from America goes to visit really. Um, you know, there's so many places that we can go and we end up going to places, uh, because of, uh, because of the big deal. Uh, you end up not saving anything because you don't have a really great holistic experience when you're there. Um, the other thing I would encourage people to do is get lost. Um, my rule of thumb when I'm taking a family vacation is we research, 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 and then when we get there, we get lost. We try to fly by the seat of our pants and not, uh, not stick to a script. Um, that makes for a more interesting trip and it certainly makes for a more adventurous, creative time and you end up having more fun. And then last but not least, I don't care whether you only get seven days at work, you know, off that year, don't take a seven day trip. Take a six day trip and come back and give yourself a day back home before you head back to work. Otherwise, you're gonna shortchange yourself both on the ameliorative benefits of the vacation itself and the pejorative uh, reaction of heading back to work too soon. I love that get lost tip. That's one of my favorite things to do if I have a chance to go out. We're running out of time. We just have a moment left. So I got to ask, I'm a big fan of watching you with Bizarre Foods and, and some of the shows you do. What's maybe the strangest thing that you've eaten you can share with us? Uh, strangest, probably uh, Pololo, which is a tiny microscopic worm that lives in coral beds a mile below uh, the ocean in the uh, Samoan Atoll in the deep Pacific. And every five to 10 years when atmospheric conditions are just right, they float up to the surface and the natives collect them and spread them on bread or cook them with eggs. Um, they're absolutely delicious. Never heard of them before, never seen them before. We'll never get to taste them again. It's a very rare commodity in the world. And uh, I, you know, the surprise of their bright blue-green algae-like color was one of, the, one of the great joys of my gustatory lifestyle. Very nice. Andrew, thank you for joining us here on The Restaurant Show today. Thanks, Ryan. Take care. Good luck. You too. Andrew Zimmern, uh, check him out on Big Country, brought to you by U.S. Cellular. We'll be back with more of The Restaurant Show in just a moment.